Welcome to China Focus. I'm Shelley Zhang. On Saturday, a 6.6 magnitude earthquake hit Lushan County in China's Sichuan province. At this point, it looks like tens of thousands have been injured and at least 200 people are dead. Now, this happened very close to the site of another earthquake about five years ago in Wintrun in Sichuan province. At the time, the government's handling was characterized by mishandling and corruption. What's the response been to this Lushan earthquake five years later? And what does it say about China's ability to handle future disasters? Here to talk about this today, we have China analyst Matt Ganesta. So let's compare the response, Matt, between uh, Wintrun and Lushan. Well, Neither really had a great response. Neither had a response that really won the hearts of the people. I mean, essentially what happens is in China, uh, they don't have specialized rescue teams so much as it's really run by the military or the People's Liberation Army. But the military has like a disaster relief it, section. It does. Yeah. But, you know, one of the problems in China is that they, they don't really have like a they don't really have real NGOs who can handle it. There are NGOs, but they're not non-government organizations in the same sense that they would be here in the United States. Uh, for example, the Red, uh, the Red Cross Society of China is essentially run by the government and it's not fully independent. They don't have uh, you know, real oversight in terms of how they operate. And so the, the sort of authoritarianism inside China actually restricts uh, their ability to handle disasters. Well, let's ha the the response that was this time that the you know response was faster than it was during when. Oh, it's much faster. It, it has improved. Of course, on the other hand, this was a much smaller earthquake. That's true. That one trend uh, killed t uh, tens of thousands of people. About by seventy thousand, by some estimates, yeah. And this one was around two hundred, as far as we know. So. Uh, the scale makes it a little easier to handle then. By, you know, by quite a bit, yeah. Uh, but, you know, you, you mentioned the NGOs, that there aren't really NGOs in China that are non-government. Is there, but right now the disaster relief and the aid and all that is being coordinated through the government and through the military. Is, why can't the government just do that directly? Well, part of the problem is, is like other parts of the Chinese government and the Communist Party, the, the military is also very, very corrupt. And so uh, you end up with uh, corruption, you end up with kind of mishandling, uh, things aren't well coordinated, uh, they're not as, as trained or practiced as um, the you know, disaster response teams in the United States, for example. Now you mentioned mishandling, but uh, you know, since the wind trend disaster five years ago, hasn't there been a lot of time to do kind of training and kind of get up to speed on how to handle earthquakes and other types of these disasters? There certainly is theoretically enough time to get up to speed, but the question is really, really whether they used these past five years to get up to speed. Now, a study done in 2009 by uh, Tsinghua University, this is like the MIT of China, and that study found that during the earthquake in 2008, 80% of the money uh, donated through disaster relief uh, donations was used essentially by the government through corruption. In other words, only 20% of it actually went to aid the victims. And so that's created an enormous amount of mistrust uh, among people that you know the, the government and the Red Cross just can't handle the disaster money. So people are donating less. So that's uh, one issue. Uh, and just generally be because they, they haven't been able to fix the corruption issue and there isn't transparency for how things are done, it's very difficult to do everything well. So I have to go back and ask you about the 80% figure. You say that 80% of that went to uh, the local governments instead of to victims. But where were these, where is the money being donated? Well, a lot of times the money gets donated to the local governments, which basically handle uh, the distribution of that. So it's really the, the money goes to the local government uh, in, in Sichuan, uh, or in, the, or in the county where the earthquake struck, and then that gets distributed. Or in this case, not very much of it gets distributed. So isn't, can they make an argument that, you know, that local government is using this money towards quake relief, even if it's not going into the victim's hands? Well, I mean, if quake relief includes, you know, meals and alcohol for local officials, then yeah. But the reality is the, the money wasn't being used well, and there's also a widespread perception that the money isn't being used well or wasn't being used well. So it's m definitely more corruption than mishandling? Well, there's a bit of both, but the problem is there's no oversight. 
So like in the US, there's transparency. There's, there's uh, government uh, accounting transparency. There's uh, transparency for nonprofit organizations like the Red Cross in the US. But in China, it's opaque. They just don't have that kind of transparency and they don't have the kind of government oversight that's genuine oversight uh, like they do in the West. So it's so much easier for uh, this kind of corruption and mishandling to occur. So that was back in 2008, but has there been any kind of increase in government oversight since then? Well, there's been some attempts at oversight by independent people. Uh, for example, Tan Zuo Ren is an activist uh, who tried to investigate what, what happened. He was the one who coined the term for tofu dregs construction. Uh, you know, for the schools. Uh, for the and... schools that collapsed because the construction was so bad, mm -hmm. like tofu, right? So, so Tan Zuo Ren uh, did some investigation and tried to sort out what happened, how did the disaster response go, you know, the people who were killed, the children. And for that, he was sentenced to five years in prison for a subversion of state power. So if the people who do the oversight gets, get thrown in prison, can there really be oversight? So it's kind of like, you know, they're saying if you try to do oversight, it's like doing oversight on state secrets or something like that. It's, it's, it's exactly. not possible. Yeah, and Tan Zuo Ren's not the only one. There's also uh, Huang Qi is also, he had spent time in prison. Uh, he runs a 6-4 Chen Wang a website uh, that's sort of is a little bit of a watchdog. But again, he was also blocked from uh, getting into the disaster area this time because of his, uh, basically because he wants to provide oversight of what's going on. So basically the local authorities are specifically preventing uh, independent oversight. And that's a major problem. You know, in, in Hong Kong, during the 2008 earthquake, people donated huge amounts of money. Uh, but this time, you know, uh, Hong Kong legislators were opposed to donating any money. One legislator, um, uh, Claudia Moore, told the Associated Press, what China lacks is not money, but clean governance. So people don't really want to donate to the, the local governments because of that, you know, transparency issue, oversight issue. What about the Red Cross? Well, the Red Cross is also tainted, essentially, uh, for mishandling. The Red Cross, of course, is essentially part of uh, the, the government or reports to the government in China. So uh, the Red Cross has had problems in China, in particular because of the Guomeme incident. She was a staff member of the Red Cross in China, or said she was, but then she posted these photos of herself with an expensive car, riding first class, basically as if uh, made a lot of people in China think that the Red Cross was corrupt and this is how the money is being used for luxurious items for its staff. Members. And actually the Red Cross recently announced that they're going to open, reinvestigate the Guomeme incident, which happened a couple years ago. Right, I mean, that was 2011. Why are they reopening the investigation now? Well, it actually, I can understand why they want to do it because people are so unhappy with the, with the Guomeme incident. But the very fact that they're reopening the investigation also tells you something. Like, you know, why couldn't they investigate it properly at that time? Uh, it's just because they're not, they know the public's unhappy with essentially the verdict of the investigation. Uh, so they're trying to use this to sort of steer public opinion in favor of the Red Cross, but it's not really working. So how are people not, donating, not donating to the Red Cross? Uh, people donating much, much less. Now, there are some companies that are donating, uh, and, uh, you know, Apple and, and other companies have donated, you know, tens of millions of, of renminbi. But there's also, mm, you could say, more political reasons why companies would donate. They feel pressure. They have to have these relationships with the government. They need to look good uh, in the public press. So they're in some ways less concerned about whether all the money goes to disaster relief than with how much they donate and, and what that says about their company. Whereas a lot of individuals who don't feel that kind of pressure simply don't want to donate anything. And a lot of netizens on um, Weibo, which is like microblogs like China's Twitter, a lot of netizens are basically saying, I'll never donate to the Red Cross again. I'll never donate to disaster relief. Not because they don't care, but because they think there's too much corruption. So that's pretty significant actually, because donations in China aren't just a matter of like voluntarily donating something, but there's a lot of social pressure actually. After the Wintron earthquake, their government was basically doing donation drives where like all Chinese citizens were, you know, encouraged to donate uh, to disaster relief. Yeah, but, but now there's just this feeling that, you know, we don't want to donate anymore. Yeah, maybe people want to give their time, they'll, they'll help out in other ways. And there's been a, a lot of wonderful stories of individuals, you know, uh, doing things, you know, a mother, uh, uh, you know, breastfed the child of a, uh, of a mother who was killed in the earthquake. 
uh, one reporter in the area in uh, Ya'an was uh, her wedding was that day. And she basically took a break from her wedding in full bridal gear to do a news report on the incident. And so there's been a lot of inspiring stories about people wanting to help. But one way in which a lot of people don't want to help is giving money. So is that kind of speaking to a wider distrust of the government? It, this, this seems like a big problem for them. It's a huge problem. If people don't trust the government uh, to distribute aid, to handle money properly, uh, yeah, it definitely speaks to you know much larger issues of distrust. And do you think this is going to affect how uh, you know the government handles disasters in the future? Yeah, well, unfortunately, there may be disasters in the future in China. Uh, these things happen, and so the the now the government has a very serious problem that really any future disaster that may happen, they're going to also have trouble uh, just because they have such a bad history. Uh, with, the, with these past two earthquakes. Can they rehabilitate that though? It's possible, but it'll take a lot of time and people have to genuinely see that there's real efforts made to, uh, to end the corruption. And I think that's just will be very, very difficult because there's uh, so much of a culture of corruption within the government. It seems that like you have to have the oversight in order to end the cor corruption. Right, I mean, they, they basically have to allow you know, third party independent activists that people trust. People trust Tan Zuo Ren, they trust Huang Qi from 6-4 Tianwang. So if they let these people do oversight, then that will actually build up quite a bit of trust. But I don't think the government wants to let independent people do oversight because then it can expose some of the, the very negative things. But what if the government just itself published, you know, here's where the donations are going, things like that? That would be great. It's unlikely to happen in the near future, though. Well, thank you for joining us today to talk about this, Matt. And thanks for watching. For more on this and other issues in China, join us at ntd.tv.